In today's video, we've got several cards from Topps. Remember those guys? That's a company that not a lot of people are talking about anymore. We've got a little bit of an obscure Diva card with the person on the card actually gaining some interest recently. The bloodline, the characters involved, all the stories going on, dominating the wrestling world. But they also kind of dominate this video because there's a lot of talent involved in that that we're going to talk about today. And to kind of parlay that into another topic, just like in that storyline where we're not sure who to trust and who's going to turn on who, we're kind of like that in the hobby. Who do we trust? And the wrestling car world has gone bonkers for the Bloodline booklet. But in this video, we talk about booklets in general and maybe another one that's similar and just doesn't quite hit that upper echelon. And we got to figure out why? This is the Wrestling Card Market Watch for February 2023. What's up wrestling fans, trading card collectors, welcome to another episode of Wrestling With Cards. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, I thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to even stop by for a minute or so. But we hope you stick around and hope you hit that subscribe button to become a member of the Wrestling With Cards community. And if you're watching this and you're already a member of the Wrestling With Cards bloodline, you know. Each month I do one of these videos looking back at some interesting sales, talking points, and numbers from the previous month in wrestling cards. So let's jump into February. MRW El Generico BGS 9.5, $79.99 with $6 shipping. We had to know that Sammy cards were going to gain some steam with his involvement in this Bloodline storyline. In my opinion, if you take one of the biggest storylines we've seen in recent wrestling history, combine that with an indie card and the talent involved, winning combination. Not to mention this is a high graded copy. So a few things immediately came to mind with this one. In a world where grading companies have become extremely hard and strict about indie cards and what is and isn't legitimate, again according to them not you know wrestlingtradingcards.com, it's awesome to see one of these not only graded but in a high grade. But do we trust this? More on that in a minute. As I stated, it's a 9.5 grade, which is by what many consider be equivalent to a PSA 10. Not only is it a high grade card, but these cards are a little bit harder to find just in general. Raw, graded, doesn't matter. Also note that this card sold during one of the hottest times of Sammy's career, even though technically it's a different character. So if this is maybe Sammy's hottest time in the mainstream of professional wrestling, and this card of his got a 9.5, and it's a rare card, why the heck did it sell for so little? I think maybe it just has to do with the wrestling card market seeing Sammy like the wrestling fans do. And what I mean by that are the people who are watching every minute of the product every single week. They love Sammy, they love this Bloodline storyline, but ultimately I just think a lot of people don't see Sammy as one of those top tier main eventers. I could be wrong, but that's just a guess from what I see people talking about on social media or people that send me DMs or just general wrestling conversation. But this also has to do with timing the market, which again, we're gonna talk about more of that later on in this show, specifically as it has to relate to Bloodline cards. Regardless, I think this is awesome to see, and I think it kinda of proves a point that I've talked about in the last few Market Watch videos. And that being the fact that I think we're having more and more diverse styles of collecting and collectors coming into the wrestling card space. 2015 Topps Chrome Summer Ray Divas Kiss Card Autograph out of 25, $225, however, a best offer of $175 with $4.50 shipping was accepted. Okay, let's get the obvious out of the way. This card's out of 25, it's an auto, it's a KISS card. The KISS cards still seem to sell really well, and maybe that was the draw for this card specifically. Maybe it's someone that is actually building out this KISS card set. Maybe it's somebody that's building out this 2015 Topps Chrome Master set. Maybe it's that creep that just wants all the KISS cards. Or possibly a Summer Rae Super Collector. And I bring up that last part about the Super Collector because I've started seeing a lot more activity on Summer Rae cards, specifically in my eBay store. As I'm listing and shipping and getting stuff in collections, I'm noticing that more and more of the Summer Rae cards that I post, like whether it's a $1.50 card or a $5 card, it doesn't matter, People are going after these things. And I've noticed that even base cards are listed with other sellers for a little bit higher than a lot of the other talent that you could buy wrestling cards out there for. So do you guys know something that I don't? Have you seen these trends? Let me know in the comments what you think of Summer Ray and Summer Ray cards. Also, did you notice? This card is made by Topps. Remember those guys? It seems like Topps has been completely pushed to the side since Panini's takeover of the WWE license. But fear not, Topps Maniacs. Our next card is an old school kind of Topps throwback that you love to see. 1985 OPC WWF number 63 Macho Man and Elizabeth rookie card, PSA 9, 
$2,995. However, a best offer of $725 was accepted. It's always awesome to see this card, especially in high grade. And keep in mind that the OPG stuff was always harder to find and still is to this day, and a little bit more expensive than the top stuff that came out at that same time. But also keep in mind that the two Macho Man cards that are in this OPG set were not released in the top set, making the two Macho Man cards in this set even more sought after and a little bit harder to find. And of course, you could probably go out there and find some beat up raw copies or maybe lower grade copies. But according to PSA, there's only 54 PSA 9s of this card and only four 10s. So maybe it's not extremely rare, but it's also such a low number that it's not something you're just gonna maybe go out and be able to pick up any of these on these higher grades any given day. That being said, going from a $3,000 price point to $725, that seems extremely low for one of the most popular talents and names in wrestling history. Kind of makes me wonder, Macho Man has such a huge following and fan base and collector base, yet a lot of his prices are not reaching where you would think. We say that a lot, a lot of talents, especially more of the modern wrestlers. But when you think of legends, a lot of people just think that the Macho Mans and the Hogans and the Flares and the Andres are all on the same level, and that's just not the case. And I'm not sure why, because when you see his cut autos, or, you know, autos with Miss Elizabeth, or some of his other rare stuff like the WCW autograph, or the 94 Action Packed autograph, numbered to 500. You see those go for quite a bit more, and maybe it has to do with the type of card, because maybe it's that those cards are autographed, they're ones as serial numbered. Maybe the cut autos are one of ones. I'm just not sure, but I'd love to hear your opinion. I don't think maybe there's a right or wrong answer, but just general discussion. Why do you think that the Macho Man cards are not hitting those levels as an Andre, a Flair, a Rock, a Steve Austin. Because overall, like I would probably put him in that upper echelon of talent, but the card market for that for him and his stuff, it's just not there for some reason. But either way, I think this is a great card and would fit in pretty much anyone's collection. 2011 FCW Summer Slammerama Rookie Card Roman Reigns BGS 8.5, $4,999 with a best offer of $1,500. This card has been on many people's radar for quite some time. And it's always interesting to hear the debate between what people like and prefer. And I'm not necessarily maybe saying the rookie card debate, although you could also argue that. But this card, compared to the 2013 Tops, compared to 2014 Chrome, and which one is the rookie card by some, but actually overall, which one would people actually prefer if they could pick between the three? In my opinion, they're all great cards. This one specifically, a BGS 8.5. Not bad for the type of like indie type release that this card is. Once again, a talking point is that this proves that people will pay up for cards that are rare regardless of what the grades are. But remember at the beginning of this video I said we don't know who to trust? That's what I want to talk about with this card is specifically some of these running around out there that are fakes. If you go out there and you start searching for a lot of the more rare cards or autographs, you start seeing fake cards or reprint cards. You may even say some fake slabs, even some fake grading companies. I know I talked about this in a previous video, but I would say it was probably a year or two ago. I purchased a complete set of these FCW cards on Macari or eBay, I can't remember. And when I got them, I could clearly tell that they were not real. And of course, the buyer tried to tell me that they're worth more now in my hand than they were when he sent them off, which whatever, I got a refund, I got it taken care of. But it just made me start questioning some of these indie releases. And what I mean by that is you're starting to see some really high-end technology of people printing these themselves. We've seen fake all-stars. We've seen fake ECW Japanese cards. Now we've seen these fake FCW cards. So that begs the question, are the ones in the slabs actually real? Why do I say that? Because we've seen some of these grading companies letting a lot of these cards that are either autographed or maybe they're altered. Maybe they had a, it's in sports cards. Maybe they had a patch altered that clearly doesn't match the serial number that it was originally with. And it just goes back to who do we trust? We're paying these grading companies that are supposed to be these experts and upper echelon knowledge of cards and autographs. But how do we trust them? I've got a video coming out next week where you're going to see some wrestling all-stars that I got back and how I kind of got killed on the grades. And maybe killed's a relative word, but I just want to talk through it about how I got certain grades, which I was more upset with not the, having the transparency of why something graded a certain grade. Again, you'll see that on that video. But just transparency. We've got to hold these grading companies to a higher standard. And maybe we just quit grading cards. I don't know. I don't see that happening. 
but you know, what do we do? And going back to this specific card, I'm not saying that this specific card is fake. I just wanted to bring it up as a talking point. And then after thinking through it, I'm like, yeah, this is why people hate grading so much. And then thinking through that, I'm thinking, well, maybe this is why people also like pack pulled certified autos more, even if they're on a sticker. And then maybe kind of parlaying that is why you see stuff like golds out of 10 or one of ones or limited serial number cards that maybe aren't autographed selling for more than actual autographs in a slab if they're not certified pack pulled. Just some caution out there if you're buying, go out there, make sure you do your homework, ask community members and get other people's opinions if you're buying a really high end card. And then once you're done with all that, just make your best decision and find out is this card going to be worth your purchase for you. 2021 Tops Undisputed. Roman Reigns, John Cena, dual auto booklet, one of one, $1,995. However, a best offer of $1,000 was accepted. Roman Reigns is the head of the table. Not to mention he's the head of the table when it comes to this video and talking about his cards this month. Let's start off once again. Hey, remember I said we had some Topps cards? Here's another one. But just like Topps, I think this is a little bit of a forgotten item. A one of one, a dual auto booklet of two of the biggest stars in WWE history. You would think this is something that people would want, especially with all the hype and the buzz around the Bloodline booklet that came out recently. And again, with this card selling at $1,000, that's not terrible. But let's break this down a little bit more and find out maybe why it didn't sell for that 2000 or even something higher. And this was a 2021 release, came out way before this whole Bloodline thing kicked off. I keep referencing the Bloodline booklet with this one. They are different, but just the parallels is something that I wanna to continue to touch on. Let's start off with the actual element of the booklet. When these come out, these seem to light up the collecting community. But in my opinion on these, the popularity of them, once they're released, it really starts waning from a price popularity standpoint. And I honestly think the biggest reason is because the style of the collectible that this is. While people love the ideas of booklets, they really struggle to find out, like, how do I display this? How do I protect this thing? I have seen one touches that are made specifically for booklets, but they're pretty hideous. And have you ever seen some of these slabbed? Yikes. Good luck displaying that thing somewhere. On top of that, this one specifically, these are sticker autos. We all know how the wrestling card community, well, all collectors for the most part, pretty much feel about sticker autos. But let's stick with the sticker argument. Some people may say that if you had these same two guys on a Prism Gold card that was a dual sticker auto, that it would sell for bonkers. And we know for the most part, pretty much all Prism autos that come out for any product are sticker autos. So maybe the complaint or the talking point I'm bringing forward here about sticker autos, maybe it just doesn't hold. So what else could it be? Could it be that it's a Topps product, which has taken a back seat to all the Panini stuff that I've talked about? For the most part, when you start comparing a lot of the same talents, a lot of the same styles of cards, when you compare the Topps to the Panini ones, the Panini ones are generally outselling most of the top stuff. And why is that? Is that because Panini truly is the superior product with a better high quality release? Is it maybe the what have you done for me lately with Panini just putting out more releases more frequently? And because obviously they have the license now, they're the only ones that can do it. Again, I'm not saying this is the case, although it may be. I'm just bringing up the point and counterpoint discussion for the collecting community. And of course, I'd love to hear your opinion on this card and anything else that I've talked about in today's video. Leave a comment below with anything you wanna to respond to that I've mentioned in this video. Maybe you have some insight, maybe you have some clarity, or you know, opinions, everybody's opinions matter in the wrestling card community. So leave a comment below, get a discussion going. And while you're leaving a comment below, make sure you check the show notes for all the ways that you can help show your support for my content. Links to the podcast, links to the eBay store, links to Patreon, and much more. If this video brought you some value, hit that subscribe button, give me a like, and share it with a friend. Tell everybody you know about the Wrestling With Cards YouTube channel and wrestling cards in general, come on. I greatly appreciate your support stopping by doing, you know, you could have been doing anything else with your time, but instead you were watching my video and I thank you for that. But until next time, click the videos on the screen for more great wrestling card content. See you there, pal.